Gain insights into Chairman Lopez's legal perspectives. This YouTube channel analyzes landmark Philippine cases presided by the distinguished 2024 bar exam chairman Mario Lopez. We summarize seminal Chairman Lopez decisions that shape jurisprudence across criminal, civil and family law. Our case digests use simplified commentary to decode Chairman Lopez's reasoning and positions. We examine the circumstances, evidence, laws, appeals and final Supreme Court rulings handed down by the chairman. For 2024 bars exam candidates, these concise video case summaries provide invaluable perspectives into Chairman Lopez's philosophy. Understand how psychological capacity assessments impacted a Quayog marriage dissolution overseen by the chairman. Or how he interprets differences between theft and estafa. We cite key excerpts from Chairman Lopez's rulings to crystallize takeaways for aspiring lawyers prepping for exams. Subscribe to regularly expand your comprehension of how the chairman applies Philippine laws. Show your support by liking, sharing and subscribing now. Republic of the Philippines v. Teresita I. Salinas Gr. No. 238308, October 12, 2022. Part 6 of 160 of cases decided by Associate Justice Mario Lopez, Bar Chairman of 2024 Bars Examinations in the Philippines. Subscribe to learn more. Facts This case arose from a petition for declaration of nullity of marriage filed by Teresita Salinas which was granted by the Regional Trial Court, RTC, of Manila. The Republic of the Philippines, Republic, filed a motion for reconsideration but it was denied. The Republic received the denial order on August 4, 2015 and had until August 19, 2015 to file an appeal. However, the RTC received the Republic's notice of appeal via registered mail in an envelope stamped with the date October 5, 2015. Thus, the RTC denied the appeal for being filed late. The Republic moved for reconsideration, alleging that its notice of appeal was timely filed. It presented an OSG inner registered SAC bill dated August 18, 2015 showing that a notice of appeal was sent to the RTC. It also submitted a certification from the postmaster stating that the registered letters containing the notice of appeal were posted on August 18, 2015. Still, the RTC denied the motion. On Certorari, the Court of Appeals upheld the RTC ruling that the appeal was filed late. Hence, this petition. Primary issue Whether the Court of Appeals erred in finding no grave abuse of discretion on the part of the RTC in denying the Republic's notice of appeal for being filed late. Ruling The Supreme Court denied the petition and affirmed the Court of Appeals' decision upholding the denial of the Republic's notice of appeal. Under the rules of court, the date of filing of a pleading submitted via registered mail is proved either by the post office stamp on the envelope or the registry receipt. Thus, no grave abuse of discretion can be attributed to the RTC in relying on the date stamped on the envelope. The OSG inner registered SAC bill is not equivalent to a registry receipt and has no probative value. The postmaster's certification is insufficient to prove the date of filing as it does not explain the discrepancy with the date on the envelope. Important doctrines The date stamped on the envelope of a pleading filed via registered mail is proof of its filing date. An inner registered SAC bill is not equivalent to a registry receipt and has no probative value. A postmaster's certification on the mailing date does not suffice if it conflicts with the date stamped on the pleading's envelope. Heirs of Pio Tejada and Soledad Tejada v. Gary B. Hay, GR No. 250542, October 10, 2022. Part 7 of 160 of cases decided by Bar Chairman Mario Lopez for 2024 Bar Examinations.
Facts of the case. Myrna Hay filed a complaint for quieting of title against the heirs of Pio and Soledad Tejada over a parcel of land. Myrna claimed ownership based on two deeds of absolute sale, first from Pio Tejada to Haru General Beach Resort in 1988, and second from Haru General to Myrna in 1992. She also presented a third deed of sale directly from Pio Tejada to her in 1997. In their answer, the heirs alleged the deeds were falsified as Pio's signature was forged. The case underwent several postponements before it was referred to mediation in 2018. The heirs then filed a motion for leave to admit an amended answer to clarify allegations and assert counterclaims including nullification of the deeds and damages. The RTC denied the motion because the case had gone through pre-trial, and ordered the heirs' counsels to explain why they claimed it had not. The heirs moved for reconsideration but were denied. They filed a petition for certiorari in the CA, which dismissed the petition and affirmed the RTC's denial of their motion for leave. Primary issue Whether the RTC gravely abused its discretion in denying the heirs' motion for leave to file an amended answer. Ruling of the Supreme Court The Supreme Court granted the petition and reversed the CA. It held that the RTC gravely abused its discretion in denying the motion for leave solely on the ground that the case had undergone pretrial. The court stressed that the primordial consideration in granting leave to amend pleadings is whether it appears dilatory, and not the timing of the filing. It found the amended answer warranted as it contained crucial allegations to properly dispose of the case, prevent multiplicity of suits, and expedite proceedings. Doctrines of the case Amendments to pleadings are favored at any stage of proceedings as long as not dilatory. Rules of procedure are mere tools to facilitate justice and should not obstruct it. Courts should treat motions for leave to amend pleadings with liberality. The paramount consideration is whether it appears dilatory, not when filed. People v. Swalig, GR No. 250852, October 10, 2022. Part 8 of 160 of cases decided by Associate Justice Mario Lopez, Bar Chairman of 2024 Philippine Bar Examinations. Subscribe for more. Facts of the case John Francis Swalig was charged with three counts of murder for killing Amado Chavez Maglante, Epi U. Maglante, and Jessa Amy U. Maglante before the RTC Kulasi antique. The informations alleged the qualifying circumstances of evident premeditation, treachery, taking advantage of nighttime and superior strength. The RTC convicted Swalig of three counts of murder despite his guilty plea and imposed the death penalty. On appeal, the CA affirmed the conviction but modified the penalty to reclusion perpetua. The prosecution presented the victim's foster daughter April who testified that on October 12, 2003 she saw Swalig hack her sister Jessa with a bolo inside their house. She hid then saw Swalig leave. Other prosecution witnesses testified on the investigation and autopsy results. Swalig did not present evidence. The RTC and CA ruled that treachery attended the killing. Issue of the case Whether the qualifying circumstances of evident premeditation and treachery were sufficiently established. Ruling The SC partially granted the appeal. It ruled that evident premeditation was not proven for lack of evidence when Swalig decided to commit the crime. Treachery was also not established because the prosecution failed to prove how the attack commenced and unfolded. Thus, Swalig is liable only for homicide, not murder. However, his plea of guilt is a mitigating circumstance. Doctrines 1. Failure to question defects in the information constitutes waiver of that right. 2. Evident premeditation must show enough time between the plan to kill and its execution. 3. Treachery requires proof of how the attack began and progressed. 
Arlene Homel Y. Romerosa vs. People of the Philippines GR No. 191039, February 2, 2022. Part 9 of 160 of Cases Decided by Associate Justice Marvic Lopez, Bar Chairman of 2024 Bar Examinations in the Philippines. Subscribe for more. Facts of the Case Dr. Jelfa Rabillos hired Arlene Homel as a clinic secretary and collector of jewelry installment payments. Arlene received P1000 from a customer Elena as payment for a gold bracelet but failed to remit it to Dr. Robillos. When Dr. Robillos followed up the unpaid installments with Elena, Elena said she already paid Arlene. Dr. Robillos filed a complaint against Arlene for qualified theft with grave abuse of confidence. The RTC convicted Arlene of Estafa under Art 315 for misappropriating the payment and violating the trust of Dr. Robillos and Elena. The CA affirmed, ruling that Arlene had possession of the money when she misappropriated it, which constitutes estafa. Primary issue Whether Arlene is guilty of qualified theft as charged, or estafa as convicted by the lower courts. Ruling of the Supreme Court The SC modified the ruling to simple theft. The information alleged all elements of qualified theft but the prosecution failed to prove grave abuse of confidence. At most, abuse of confidence is a generic aggravating circumstance. Arlene is sentenced to four months and one day imprisonment for simple theft. Doctrines of the case 1. Grave abuse of confidence must be proven to convict an accused of qualified theft. 2. Abuse of confidence is a generic aggravating circumstance in simple theft. 3. Estafa requires allegations and proof of juridical Antonio S. Quayog Jr. v. Maria Bell B. Quayog and the Republic of the Philippines GR No. 203992, August 22, 2022. Part 10 of 160 of Cases Decided by Associate Justice Mario Lopez, Bar Examination Chairman of 2024 Philippine Bar Exams. Subscribe for more. Facts of the Case Petitioner Antonio Quayog filed a petition for declaration of nullity of his marriage to respondent Maria Bell Quayog on the ground of psychological incapacity under Article 36 of the Family Code. The couple married in 1980 and had four children. In 1998, Maria Bell drove Antonio out of their conjugal home due to his womanizing and gambling. Antonio claimed both parties were psychologically incapacitated to comply with marital obligations. The RTC granted the petition, declaring the marriage void based on the psychiatric evaluation of Dr. Garcia finding both parties psychologically incapacitated. On appeal, the CA reversed the RTC ruling, holding that Antonio's infidelity and irreconcilable differences did not constitute psychological incapacity. Issue of the case whether the marriage is void on the ground of psychological incapacity under Article 36 of the Family Code. Ruling of the case The Supreme Court granted the petition and declared the marriage void solely on the ground of Antonio's psychological incapacity, which existed prior to the marriage. Antonio's chronic infidelity satisfied the requirements of psychological incapacity. However, Maria Bell's retaliatory acts did not amount to psychological incapacity as these only existed during the marriage. Doctrines of the case 1. Infidelity may indicate psychological incapacity if it shows the spouse is completely unable to discharge marital obligations due to a disordered personality.
2. Psychological incapacity must satisfy gravity, juridical antecedents, and incurability. 3. Spousal abuse as a reaction to infidelity does not necessarily indicate psychological incapacity.